you are the doctor on a general medical ward. You hear the emergency buzzer and rush to the scene where a patient is having a seizure. What is running through your head? How many milligrams of lorazepam was it again? Or was it diazepam? When do I need to do it? Time is brain. Stop. We're going to learn about seizures. In particular, functional seizures. There are two main causes of seizures, epileptic seizures and functional seizures. Also called dissociative psychogenic non-epileptic seizures or functional neurological disorder. We're going to call them functional seizures in this video. Functional seizures can look a lot like epilepsy, with changes in a person's motor, sensory or cognitive function. In the emergency setting, it is more important to distinguish between epilepsy and functional seizures. Crucially, in epilepsy, there is an electrical storm in the brain that can be seen on an EEG. In a functional seizure, there is also a change in brain function, but not one that is visible on conventional tests. And there is a problem. People with functional seizures are often misdiagnosed as having epilepsy. They get mismanaged with benzodiazepines. They are the right treatment for epilepsy through suppressing the electrical activity which causes the seizures, but often make functional seizures worse. And when they don't work, people with functional seizures may climb further up the emergency treatment ladder and end up in ITU and intubated. One study showed that over 50% of people with status presentations thought to be related to epileptic seizures actually had functional seizures. In another study, 15% of people with functional seizures going through an emergency department ended up being intubated. We are causing harm. And it's easy to understand why. Functional and epileptic seizures look similar and the risk of not treating status epilepticus is potentially disastrous. But missing functional seizures is also dangerous. We're going to review some highly specific signs which you can arm yourself with when reviewing the patient with seizures. Think A to E. Appearance. Looking at the whole patient, are the movements clonic or are the movements tremulous? Breathing. In epilepsy, the patient stops breathing and can go blue quite quickly. Check the O2 sats and make sure the probe is on correctly. Or are they hyperventilating or is O2 saturation normal despite breath holding and convulsive seizure activity? Communication. During a generalized tonic-clonic seizure, someone with epilepsy cannot communicate. Some patients with functional seizures will respond. Observe carefully if the seizure changes when you speak to the patient. You can also try squeezing their hands and ask whether they can squeeze back. Duration. Most generalized tonic-clonic seizures are over in 90 seconds. In tonic-clonic status epilepticus, periods of convulsive movement tend to alternate with periods of suppressed movement, flaccid muscle tone. Greater than two minutes of continuous motor activity is more likely to be functional. Eyes. Are their eyes open or partly open? In functional seizures, patients' eyes are often closed. If you can't open them, this suggests a functional seizure. You can also try gently touching their eyelids to see if they flutter or twitch. Let's now touch on some post-ictal signs. These won't help in the acute assessment of a seizing patient, but might help with the onward management or repeated seizures. Many people think that tongue biting or continence indicates epilepsy. In fact, both occur quite commonly in functional seizures and are usually not helpful clinical features. After convulsive epileptic seizures, breathing is often like snoring. Is recovery really fast? That would suggest a functional seizure. However, prolonged recovery is not a good clinical distinguisher. Is the patient crying? Can they recall shaking? Think functional. What should you do for someone you think is having a functional seizure? Put away the meds. Do not give benzodiazepines. Some people believe it will help any anxiety which could be contributing to the functional seizure or that most patients with functional seizures have epilepsy, so it's best to err on the side of caution. Benzos tend to make the patient more dissociated or spaced out, 
which can leave the patients with even less control over their thoughts and movements than they would normally have during a functional seizure. Take off the oxygen. Diffuse the situation. Get rid of the crowd of people. Gently speak to the patient, address them by their name, reassuring them that they are having a functional seizure and that they are safe and this will pass. Observe and wait. Functional seizures do not cause metabolic derangement or brain damage, even if they continue for many minutes. People who suffer with functional seizures are not putting it on. These are real changes occurring in their bodies. We just need to make sure we manage them correctly. So remember, in A&E, think A to E. Observe the patient's appearance. Is the movement clonic or tremulous? What is their breathing like? Has their oxygen saturation dipped or have they remained normal despite hyperventilation and breath holding? Communication. Can the patient respond to you, such as making eye contact or can squeeze your hand when asked? Is the seizure greater than two minutes in duration? Remembering that a prolonged seizure could still indicate epilepsy. Are their eyes open? Is there any response to touch, such as eye fluttering? These are just some of the signs that can help to guide you. If you suspect someone is having a functional seizure, try not to panic. Keep them from harm and put away the medication. <laughs>